Hi, I'm Madison and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my August reading plans. So, I keep filming in different locations. Oh my god, Zelda might start running around everywhere. Today I'm filming in my family's living room. Um, because why not? I thought I would try something different out. Anyway, let's get into uh, the books that I plan to read in August, which I'm actually really excited about. I had a bit of a slow reading month in July because I was I moved and then I was writing my book. And so because of that, my reading definitely took a large toll. So there are a lot of books I really want to get to in August. Also, the That was Zelda. Um, <laughs> also, there are a lot of really good books coming out in August and then a bunch of books that are going to be coming out this fall that like maybe I haven't read the prequel to and things like that. So I've, I've got pretty ambitious reading plans, honestly, considering how shit everything's been going lately. But these are books I'm really excited to read and so let's get into them. First, we have The Good Catch by Carly Jean. I'm so excited for this because this is a, a baseball player romance. And I know I'm, I'm definitely like in that like baseball player like vibe. I feel like the summer is the perfect time to read that. This follows Miles and Riley. Miles is Riley's older brother's best friend and they haven't seen each other in, I think they haven't seen each other in six years. But it's been eight years since the night that changed everything, um, which I'm guessing something happened between them eight years ago. And basically he's back in town for the summer under the pretense of um, being on their baseball team. And now that they're like back in each other's orbits, like things are gonna start happening between them and he's determined to like make things happen between them this time. And I'm so excited. This this definitely feels like the perfect like August read, like the perfect like end of summer, like culmination summer romance. So this I'm stoked about. Plus it's super short and I'm really excited. It's um it's her first book as well. This is a debut author and I can also see that there are like little text message chains in here and I don't know about you but uh whenever I see text message chains I get so excited in books so yes. Then for August we've got Rewrite Our, Rewrite Our Story by Kat Singleton. Every single time I say this title I'm like blah, 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 blah. but I'm reading this because this is book one in the Sutton Mountain series and book two is coming out in September so I definitely want to read this in August to prep for book two because I'm really, really excited for book two, especially because the cat is so excited for it. So rewrite our story, um, to be quite honest, I'm not too sure what this is about. The only thing I know really about this, um, we're following Cade, hang on, Cade and Mare. And basically what I do know is that everyone cries during the prologue when they read this, but then the rest of the book is like super smutty, super hot, super fast paced. And I'm like, Oh my god! Like what? So like, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to know too much about this before I go into it because I, I don't want to be like shocked by whatever the prologue is. Basically, something happened between the two of them eventually when they did get together, and it ended in super tragedy, which is what the prologue is. And then it fast forwards to present day. Mare is a best-selling romance author. She actually used her heartbreak from Kate to like write her best-selling novel. And because of circumstances, she's been forced to come back to Sutton Mountain. And now that she's back in Sutton Mountain, she's being faced with Kate again. And it's them starting their second chance romance. So I don't know anything else about it apart from that. But I've seen a lot of people absolutely adore the crap out of this book. And I'm really excited for it. I read Black Ties and White Lies earlier this year and gave it like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely adored it. It's like one of my favorite books that I've read this year. And so because of that, I definitely have a lot of hope in this book and I think that I'm going to absolutely love it but yes it's also been a hot second since I've read a small town romance and so I definitely like want to read another like I'm, I'm I miss my small town romances you know then for shits and giggles we've got not so lucky by Trelina Pucci obviously now that I've moved to Vegas I have to read this book now I was planning to read this in July but got super swamped and just didn't get around to it. So instead it's gonna be like one of the first books I read in the month of August. So you're following Eleanor and she's in Vegas as she gets super placid one night, wakes up the next morning and finds out that she's married to a major NFL player. She goes, ha, huh, fuck. She goes, well, that's not how that was supposed to go. And then you've got Crew, who's the NFL player that she got married to. Um, not only that, but during the night together, Crew was with his two other teammates that night and all three of them actually ended up getting with Eleanor too. And so it's like, oh, it's not a, it's not a why choose romance because it is her and Crew's romance, but there is like some sharing that does go on as well. And basically 
Eleanor wants to get an annulment, but Crew doesn't actually want to get the annulment, and it's their romance over this. It's supposed to, I think, take place kind of nearish to 4th of July, which is like when this came out. You know, I'm just super excited for it. Um, I cannot wait to read this. I was already like flicking through, and I was like, oh my god, like it's just like sex, 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 sex. And I was like, oh! But Trillian Apriji does such a great job at really blending her sexy plots with like actually creating a romance from the characters as well. And her banter, her humor, Trillian Apriji has some of the best humor ever. I read Tangled in Tinsel for Christmas, and it was my favorite book, like one of the best books I read last year. And this is like the second book like in that series. The characters don't connect, but they're all like holiday books. Kind of like Leisure Cot, but these are a bit bigger. Like Leisure Cot's Holy Night novellas are novellas. So they're like half the size of this. Whereas this is Trillian Apucci's Holler Dates series. And they're like full on like books. So yeah, for example, here's one of the chapter titles. I think we should share custody of your cock. <laughs> oh, I'm dead, I'm dead, I cannot wait. Then I have, this is um, a maybe. I know people are probably getting very excited right now. I've got The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent that I plan to do a dedicated reading vlog to. However, can you believe I bought this book my dumb bitch energy. I thought this was like an entire series. It wasn't until I got the book and was like looking at it because it says up here, Crowns of um, Nyaxia novel. And so because of that, I thought like this was like a whole, like a, gonna be a big series. But then I read down here and it says, The Nightborn Duet, book one. And I go, oh, it's a duet. So the series is complete. Book one and book two are out. So this is done, but there, I think there are gonna be more books in this universe. Now I could be completely wrong here. I don't actually know. Now, I don't know too much about this apart from the fact of whatever's on the back of the book because I do want to do my reading vlog completely like blind. So you're following Oriya and she is the adopted human daughter of the Nightborn Vampire King. And there are a couple of different vampire kings that exist, okay? And basically there's this one um, tournament that happens every single, like so often, and it's the legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself. And she has to compete in it and win it in order to prove her place, like as a human under the Vampire King. The thing is that she has to actually make an alliance with a mysterious rival. And his name is, I think it's Rain, to be quite honest with you. And he's a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, and also the enemy to her father's crown. Okay, so the two of them have to work together in order to survive the competition, but they are enemies, not only like vampire wise, but they're also like competitors in the competition as well. And so it's their romance and also like that as like a fantasy adventure too. I've heard that her books are a little bit slow burn, but I've just been seeing this series everywhere. And so I wanted to do a dedicated vlog to it. So that's my plans currently. Spoilers, I don't normally tell you guys about my, this, this normally this early on, but um, I do know for sure that I am doing this and so, you know, I figured I might as well tell you guys. Wow, this book is really pretty on the inside. Look at that, huh? And then lastly, we have got Holy Night number seven. I know, was just, since I was just talking about it, congrats. So Leisure Cot on the end, at the very end of August, she's releasing her next Holy Night novella, which is her Labor Day novella. Um, and I know this because she said that it released like on August 29th and I always get the arc a week prior. So I will be reading it in August. Um, and I'm excited for this one. I, well, to an extent, because she just, she put a poll in her story the other day asking about degradation kink, and I'm a little bit worried that the main kink, it, I'm worried that the main kink in this next novella is gonna be um, that, which is not my cup of tea, but we shall see. I don't know if this book has a name or anything yet. Um, all I know is that it's just the next Holy Night novella. So if it does have a name or like a place to cover up, put it up here, but that I'm excited about. And then lastly, oh right, hang on, let me grab, let me grab this. What's it called? So I was also planning to read another Omegaverse, but every single Omegaverse that I have on my TBR is four to 500 pages long. How did that even happen? I just want a nice short Omegaverse. I don't want to read, ugh, I want, now I'm trying to find one to put on my, t I want to put an Omegaverse on my TBR this month. And I had one in mind, but then I checked to see how long it was. And it was like 500 pages. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, can I not find a, a Omegaverse that's a bit shorter, please? Oh, okay, I found one. Okay, 338 pages. This is called Captivate by AJ Lawson. It's part of the first book in the Not Their Omega series. Um, this says, this follows a girl 
who was doing fun on her own didn't need a look at Zelda didn't need a pack until one of mistake has her perfuming enough to draw every enforcement officer in a 10 block radius I know what happens to me if I go into custody unclaimed and so when a blazing hot surprisingly kind Omega throws me a life raft I grab it with both hands the only problem he didn't exactly clear his claim on me with his pack and his pack doesn't want an Omega ah uh -huh. cool so you've got Fox Miles Levi Thane there's the four of them. Oh my God. Okay, excited. Okay, there we go. That is gonna round out my August TBR. <laughs> Let me know what your most excited book is for August. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. If you wanna see more of me, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and threads. And until next time, thanks so much everyone. Bye-bye.